Good morning. I feel like I should, I feel like I should keep dancing. Or something. Um, that music really doesn't represent me, actually. You can probably tell by the way I'm dressed. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, my name's Harry, and I work at a company called uh, Seltra. And I, I'm very competitive, and I've just realized that I'm very much in control of my own destiny with this bullshit bingo card and this presentation. Uh, <laughs> But um, yeah, we, um, we're a creative company that builds software allowing advertisers and brands and what have you to design and build uh, display creatives. So you can use our platform to create HTML5 creatives. And we've been working with Digiday on kind of a state of the industry report looking at kind of this topic here. And personally, I try and steer away from ad blocking because it kind of annoys me a little bit. But I think this title actually kind of summarizes really nicely what it's about. And yeah, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. So, here we go. Gosh, it is bright up here. I'm English. You probably guessed already. If I spend too long up here, I'll get sunburnt. Uh, okay, so, I like a lot of audience participation, so I'm going to try and ask you to put your hands up and at different times. And if you don't, I will kill you out, so watch out for that. Okay, I want to start with a statement. I want to get kind of a sense of the room, if you like. And here's the statement. Only we, the advertising industry, made ad blocking a big deal. So I'd like you to put your hands up if you agree with that statement. Interesting, I can't see toffee. Okay, I think the consensus is that's not true. So ad blocking we think is a big deal. Okay, that's interesting because some of the questions we've asked throughout the survey, and I'm gonna give you a sneak peek into some of the results today, are some of these questions. Now the survey itself has gone out to a lot of brands and agencies and what have you, and it's still in progress, but when I pulled the numbers last night, we had about 250 respondents, so I think we had a good enough sample to put some of the results in today, so I'll, I'll let you into some of those. Okay, so again, next question. Okay, biggest impact on user experience, and there's three options here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put our hands up when I call out each option. Okay, so I'd like you to put your hands up if you think that add context, so the inventory if you like, is the biggest impact on user experience. I think there was no hands. Gosh, it's very hard. Okay, second one, add presentation, so the format, if you like, the way it's presented. If you think that's the biggest impact on user experience. Okay, a few more, so about a third. And then the last one, add content, so the creative itself. Okay, so we really think that the message, what's being said, is, is really important. Probably goes with presentations as well, if I think about it. I can dress nice, but if I've got terrible content, it's not really very interesting. Okay. Well, here's what we got from the results so far, similar to you guys. So over 52% of people said that ad content, uh, so the creative, the design, the message, all that kind of stuff is the most important part and why we have, uh, or the biggest impact on user experience, really. Okay, so next one. Okay, creative really is obviously the next uh, frontier in digital display advertising. We really believe that, and so we're really focusing on it. And I know creative is one of the, the buzzwords, but I think it really is not got the attention it deserves until now. I think if you look at kind of the Loomascapes for the last couple of years, there's been a lot of focus and time, resource, and money on kind of finding that audience, so the media side of things, finding that audience, targeting that audience, identifying where they are, and very little time is being spent on, well, what do you show them once you've found them? And so I think we're at that point now, hopefully we're at that point now where we're really gonna focus on creative. And so when we asked people, 48% of people said that a lack of creative or lack of creative relevancy was responsible for ad blocking. So not making your creative relevant was really kind of the biggest impact on, on users driving ad, ad blocking. And so we wanted to look at, well, why is this? Why is relevancy not being done? How can you do relevancy? And so I have got some examples today of how we can make relevancy. So let's take this presentation, for example. Let's imagine I stand here and I face this way. I look into the distance and I say, I'm gonna talk about creative and relevancy and tell you all about the content of this presentation I've done. Put your hands up if you think that would be a very exciting presentation. Put your hands up if you think it would be relevant. Probably not. But if instead I came down here, and I went over to you, what's your name? Orly. Hi, Orly. I'm Harry. Gosh, I look like I'm proposing. I didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> the look on your face is like, what's going on? Let's imagine I stood here, and then I got to know your name, and I got to know your work from Oakley, and I said, right, I'm going to make my presentation really content, really relevant, really nice and sincere for you. Do you think that would be better? Do you think it would be more relevant? Exactly, exactly. It's not hard to do. You can do it with presentations. I'm sure we can do it with creative as well. So we want to do that stuff. When you receive an ad, there's so much context, particularly on your phone, about when you receive that ad. So let's say you receive an ad now. Okay, you're at work, you're at a conference, you're in Utah, it's December, it's sunny outside, it's a bit cold. There's so much context there that you can take into your creative. It should be aware. We really want to make creatives aware of the rich context of when they're being served. We don't want them to be ignorant or oblivious. 
I want it to be a rare. Take this one here, for example. You know, there's so much context around when this woman is receiving her ad. We really want to try and build that into the present, into the um, creative. Okay, but, there's always a but. <laughs> this is my personalization curve I put together, which I think really nice sums up the fact that you don't want to go too far with it. So you can have really generic advertising. And of course, there's lots of mediums out there that are quite generic. Very successful ones, still very generic. Kind of the megaphone approach, just shout out one message to everyone. And then you've got the other side of things. You've got the really personalized stuff. Sometimes social can be a bit personalized. Sometimes retargeting can be a bit personalized. Yes, it's okay to know that I was shopping, but I don't want you to know that I was in Victoria's Secret looking at certain items. So there is a sweet spot here on when you can make your ad relevant and get better engagements for it. And I'm sure we're all nodding along right now. I really can't see, I'm afraid. <laughs> I hope you are. And so we think that creative needs to be contextually engineered for this personalized generation. Now, put your hands up here if you have an iPhone. Okay, put your hands up here if you have an Android. Oh dear, I have a problem with you Android people, I'm afraid. I have an example from the plane yesterday. It just seems to be that Android people, they're so self-satisfying. They're such a smug bunch sometimes. I met this guy, classic guy on the plane yesterday, and I had, a, had an iPhone, and he says, oh, I've got an Android. I said, oh, why do you have an iPhone? He went, I'm not a sheep. I'm not going to have my hardware and software decisions dictated to me by, by some big company. I want to choose my own video player. I want to choose my own phone dialer, he said to me. He actually said phone dialer. I was like, Christ, it's not like you've disconnected from the matrix. You're not off the grid because you've got an Android. You've bought some Samsung, you know what I mean? It's still a massive corporation. It's not two brothers making Sam and Sung, just making phones in their shop. <laughs> Christ, I think more people have Androids than iPhones, but he was very proud of his Android. Anyway, my point is, a lot of us have got iPhones in this room. Probably very similar ones. I have an iPhone 5S, 16 gigabyte, black. If you see it lying around, please bring it back. No, I haven't lost it, but I'm terrible at these things. Point is, some of you have iPhones out there. Now, if we swapped devices, even though it's the same phone, same software, it will probably be completely useless to us. So if I gave you my phone, you wouldn't be able to use it because it's so heavenly personalized for me. We kind of take it for granted. If you think about your banking app, it's set up for my accounts. If you think about your messaging app, it's your messaging. If you think about Uber, it's got your home, your work already saved in it. Emails, it's your email. So I couldn't use that phone. It would be totally redundant for me. We've never really had that before. If we think about desktop, we went to the same websites and logged in. I went to the same Gmail page as you. I went to the same Facebook page and logged in. If I go to CNN, it's probably the same page as you guys. We've never had that level of personalization before. And so it's even more imperative that the creative we serve on these devices is equally as personalized. Because if they're not, we're just going to miss them. We're not going to notice them, not going to be relevant. They're not going to fit in with that mindset that we're in. So we really need them to be contextually engineered for this generation. Okay, excellent. So the thing is, we've also got to make it easy. So I put a obligatory screenshot there from our platform. And what we're trying to do at, at Seltra is really think about the UI when you're doing creative design and when you're actually producing these creators. Because typically, and I'm sure some of you will be out there thinking, well, to build relevant ads, individual personalized ads, it just increases the work. And I remember the Quantcast guy had a slide talking about how people would love to be able to reduce the cost of execution, the time of execution, the resources. And so we want to do that, and so we're really working hard to do that. So here you can see our context builder. So this is where you can build your different contexts. You can set up your different audience groups. You can choose your temperature, your precipitation. Make it look really nice, make it look really easy. And clients kind of agree with that. So there's a quote here from Think Jam. Creative Agency does a lot of entertainment stuff. They've really adopted kind of the creative relevancy piece in Seltra to be able to build nicely contextual ads using a single creative a single tag, so it's just one tag, it's just one creative. And what happens, instead of having versions of the creative, we have variants. So you only have to send out one tag, so it actually reduces trafficking, it reduces the amount of work you have to do it. You can create really nice ones. And what we're seeing by that is actually, typically campaigns are now having less creatives because they're increasing the number of variants. So they're increasing the number of different options, whether it's because of the weather, whether it's because of the time, but actually the number of creatives are going down. So we are seeing reductions in workflow and, and stuff like that, which is really exciting. That's kind of the, the biggest testament for us as a software company is seeing that people are becoming more efficient with it, which is great. And some of these are the most popular signals, particularly for relevancy. So a lot of people will talk about audience data, first party, third party. 
definitely ticked a few boxes there. But um, subtle changes can have really big impact. Just subtle changes to your creative, whether it's around date or location or, or time of day, these subtle changes can have a really impact on, on how users perceive your brand, how users engage with the ads and what their experience is. Um, so I put an example up here. This is one for entertainment, with all of the Muppets. Classic ad you'd see here, so running a video interstitial. Um, and they use the date range really to change the messaging at the end of the creative. So you'll see when the video finishes playing, they just tweak the copy slightly. So when it's coming out on Friday, if you get the ad on Mondays, it says coming out Friday. On Thursday, it says coming out tomorrow. On Friday, it says coming out today. Saturday, it says out now. You get, the, you get the idea. But it's still one ad, one tag. So they're just tweaking the text. OK. So what brand impact does poor advertising have? So we asked this in our survey as well. As you can see, we all pretty much agree that there's basically a high impact on your brand. And that's probably for the publisher and for the advertiser on poor advertising. Now, I really want to know who this 6% is. <laughs> Who's this 6%? I think they might work for the regulatory body for pharmaceutical advertising, if you ask me. I've never experienced pharmaceutical advertising until I moved to America, and wow, wow. <laughs> My <laughs> the ability for me to read has really gone up, and it, it's a bit disturbing at times. You always get the happy family in the background, and then the possible death cause. Yeah, <laughs> anyway. Um, OK, the next one we asked was, do you think about user experience when advertising? So you know, the majority of people here, if I add those together, what are we on? 72% of people said that. It's a really high priority. So we all know it affects our brand. We know that creative experience when advertising is important. So I guess the best bit is why are we not all doing it? Well, I didn't put that in here because I thought I want you to read the report when it comes out. But if you have a look at the report when it comes out, we do ask what we think the biggest blocker is. So if we take about an example here, so I want to take an example for video. So by 2016, mobile video ads will reach 92% of all US 16 to 35 year olds. So very important demographic. And mobile video is really the way they're consuming everything these days. Much shorter form content, much more punchy, much more snappy, just on the go, on the fly, often shared content, as we've talked about a lot today. And so there's really two options for doing video on mobile at the moment. So you have the classic kind of in-stream. So this is pre-roll. I've just had a thought. I know who that 6% was. That's the people that do non-skippable pre-roll ads. Those people don't care about user experience. <laughs> Um, so you have in-stream options here, and then you have published content, and then you kind of have outstream. So outstream is the idea where you put video uh, inside the content, so as you're scrolling through. And I think this is a much better experience because, as we were saying before, the scrolling, the swiping, a bit like Tinder, it's just the way we use our devices now. And so that's a much better experience. So, so outstream is much better, and we know this because in-stream really they're not designed for mobile. In-stream comes from desktop days of, of YouTube and what have you. And on mobile, it particularly really doesn't seem to work. 85%, and this is, this is YouTube's own numbers from the four A's in the summer, 85% of people are skipping pre-roll ads. So clearly not that interesting. Kind of, it, it's interrupting your content. So I think it's not a great experience. Whereas Outstream offers a user experience that is, is more crafted for mobile. So at any time, you can just carry on browsing if you want to. So it's kind of a bit more native. It doesn't have sound on it. It doesn't blast out and interrupt you and what have you. And it's a better user experience. So we've, we've really crafted a storytelling experience here. So, so this is our particular outstream format, if you like. And what we do is we pause the video until it comes in at 70%. Uh, we blur it on appearance just so it's a bit more softer as it appears. So you then get this nice video ad. You get text cards. So you can replace the emphasis on audio with really nice text cards, so high quality, rich text cards to get your key messages across. And then you get a nice kind of end card at the end so people can just carry on doing something. I realize it's really squeaky. I'll stop moving around. OK, and then we saw an example here for, for, from Audi. So Audi tried uh, what we call our short form vertical video product. Um, and they had a really great experience with, with the, the video here. And, and it just achieved an 80% increase on their video completion benchmark. So people just seem to be more engaged by these short, punchy videos. And I have to agree, looking at this, I think this is much nicer. There was no sound. I got the text. I got the key messages. It's kind of exciting. It's engaging. So I think it's kind of a nice storytelling experience. Um, OK. so. Last one, last one on audience participation. So can your client's creators be improved? So probably a lot of you work for brands here, so put yourself in this situation and say, can my creators be improved? And if you're an agency, so put your hands up if you would say, always. Good, good. Maybe you guys are from the agencies. Um, put your hands up if you say, often. Okay, put your hands up if you say, sometimes. And anyone here confident enough to say, never, my ads are always perfect. No, okay. Well, the kind of consensus is the same. So 
66% of people so far, and, and the other 22, so we have 88% of people are saying that there is definitely room for improvement when it comes uh, to their creative that they're doing. So we know why. We just need to start advertising creative first, and I think we're on that page, and that's really what Seltra's passionate about. Thanks a lot. Great, thank you. We're actually out of time, but I know you're going to be around for questions. But yes, I'm around today. Uh, come and ask me questions. Feel free to, to tweet me and stuff like that. Great. Thanks a lot. Who cares? All right. Actually, I was just reading uh, Baxter's thing about.